All right. So in this chapter, we've been talking about, you know, how great it is if we can have um, our data be um, represented by a linear equation or what we call a regression line. You know, a line that's, you know, y equals mx plus b, where you just have the slope and the y-intercept, and it's a straight line. It's simple. It's easy to work with. That would be great, you know, because it makes our lives much easier. But how do we actually know if using a linear equation is okay? Like, how do we know if it's appropriate? How do you know if it makes sense? How do you know it's not supposed to be that we need a curved line or a line, you know, a line that, you know, goes, you know, like exponential looking? Like, how do we know? We don't want, we obviously don't want to be incorrect and use a straight line when we're not supposed to be using a straight line for the data. So we are going to need a method to determine if using a linear equation is going to be okay. And luckily we do. And what we have to help us with this is going to be that we're going to be using a residual plot. A residual plot is basically a graph, kind of like a scatter plot, but it shows the x values or the response or the um, explanatory variables graphed against the residuals. So the residuals are going to be like the y values. And with the residual plot, you can see if there is a clear pattern between um, the you know, between between the data points where a linear equation will not be OK. So this is going to be one of the, the main tools that we're going to use in this chapter when we're um, analyzing a set of data. So let's go through a practice problem so we can see how we go about this. So let's, what we got here is um, got some data you know, with um, you believe Julia's or Julia's father would like to open a restaurant and is assigned how much to charge for toppings on pizza. So he sent Julia to eight different restaurants around town to find out how much they each charge. Julia returned the following information. Looks like she went to all, you know, all these sweet pizza places, Palos, Vittori's, Restaurante, Isabella, John Boy's, and so forth. And these are the number of toppings with the price they cost. So we're going to first make a scatter plot of this data and graph the least squares regression line. So let's go ahead and let's do that first. All right, so here's your scatter plot. And let me review with you how we can calculate the least squares regression line with our calculator. So remember, we go to stats and in our list, let's enter the data. Remember the toppings we got in list one and the price in list two. And what we're going to do from here is we're going to press stat, go to calc, and go to linear regression. You can technically use either one, but this is the exact form. So linear regression number eight. And here we're going to type L1. No, I'm going to have to click seconds. L1 comma L2. That's going to tell me to run the linear regression function for the data in list one versus list two. And I just press enter. And there we go. If you have like a more uh, newer version of the calculator, it's probably going to be actually be easier because you're going to see exactly where to enter your data. And then this will give us our equation for our linear regression equation. And A and B are given here. So let's go ahead. Let's write our least squares regression line, which our y hat is equal to 7.74 plus 1.36x. Remember the, now remember to plot it. Don't use a slope to you know, go up 1.3. It's going to be a little too tedious. Use the y-intercept. You know, we know it's going to go through 0, comma 7.74 approximately. And pick another point that's farther out, like maybe my pack pick seven. It's gonna go through seven and to find the y value. Remember, just plug seven in for x. 7.74 plus 1.36 times seven. And it's gonna approximately go through seven comma 17.26. That. So let me go ahead and plot that like so. Let 
All right, there's our mean least squares regression line approximately. Now we got to make the residuals on the scatter plot because this is what we're going to use. Well, this is what, this is their first step to make a residual plot, which is going to be on here. So we're going to make a residual plot of the data on the second grid here. And what we're going to need to first do, obviously, is calculate the residuals. So we're going to recalculate the residuals for each of these values. Remember, I'd like to make an extra column. Remember, these are these are our x values. These are the y's. And we're going to make another column for like the predicted y. Predicted y. These are the actual y. Then from there, I'll make another column next to it where I get the residual. Residual, because the residuals are going to be the actual y minus predicted. So the y minus the y hat. Now, what I like to do to, to make this much quicker is to use remember, our calculator, like I did in the previous problem, to just calculate all of them in, in one, one swoop. So I'm like, list three, I'm going to populate list three with my predicted Ys. I'm going to go to list three, but highlight actual list three. And on list three, I'm going to enter the equation for Y hat. So I'm going to put 7.74 plus 1.36 times x or times l1 in this case because that's where my x values are and see right away i get my my predicted y values and then from there i can scroll over and in list four i can calculate my residuals by highlighting list four and making list four equal to the actual y minus predicted which will be list two minus list three the list two minus list three that's the actual values of y are in list two, the predicted ones are in list three. Press enter and bang, I got my residuals just, just like that. So I can just simply copy them down right from there. Now, what I'm gonna do with these residual values is I'm gonna make a, another scatter plot, the one right below it, and keep the x axis exactly the same with those same values of toppings. You know, it's still gonna be the values of the, the, the toppings of the pizza, like a number, like a numbered exactly the same number of toppings. But on the y-axis, these are going to be the residuals. These are going to be the residual values. Residuals. And I'm going to essentially plot the these values here as my y. These are going to be my y values. And you see, you have some negative and some positive. So you're typically going to make like a center axis at zero. Somewhere like right over here. It's going to be kind of weird at first when you're not. Let me actually make a, make, a, make a pink. This is actually like, think of it as like the x axis in a way. What well, is? This is just the line. This is zero. This is a zero line. And from there, I scale, you know, you know, a big in the, you know, according to like, so that way I can fit all these values. So I'm going to scale up about by, by 0.5 so I can fit all those. So I go up positives, you know, in this direction. And then below that, I go in the other direction, negatives, just like a regular. And it's like a regular um, graph. I didn't miss one for a second. Okay, and then I plot my residuals as, you know, I apply my residual plot with this as the x coordinate and these as the y's. So my first point will be 1, 1.4. 1, 1.4, like right about here. I'll probably zoom out a little bit. Next, I go three comma negative two point eight. Then I go a uh, four comma point zero point eight. Six comma negative point nine. Three comma point seven.
and then um, five comma five comma two. Then zero comma zero point three. And two comma negative one point five. And this is my residual plot. This is my residual plot. Now, now what's the point of this? Well, what this allows us to see more easily is if there is going to be like a like an, a pattern essentially. We basically want it so that there is no obvious pattern in the residual plot because when there is no obvious pattern in the residual plot that means this linear equation will be appropriate because that means it's basically not, it's not biasing the data. It's not like going like, um, you know, completely below a set and above. It's not doing anything systematic. It's not systematically biasing the values. It's not, it, it's basically a good line that approximates the, that approximates the points. Cause you know, it goes through the, through, through all of them through the middle of all of them um, to keep it simple. When you're basically doing questions, you know, where you have to determine if the, you know, if a set of data is okay to use a least squares regression line to, uh, you know, approximate, approximate it or to model it, they say, check if the residual plot, if there's an obvious pattern, if there's no obvious pattern, if this is just like random scatter like this, then you're good. So we're just going to say like, there's no obvious pattern here. And so it's going to be okay for us to use a linear model to model the set of data. So typically I will you usually have my students memorize or write their and their write their explanation in some form like this. Scatter plot looks like the data may, may be linear. And since the residual plot doesn't show any obvious pattern, it's safe to use a linear model for this set of data. Okay, let's look at some other um, graphs to kind of better get a gauge of what um, residual plots represent. So let's see, we have three scatter plots and three residual plots here. So each of those scatter plots, these are, you know, the data, X and Y, each of these scatter plots goes with one of these residual plots. So take a look at each of these and try to see if you can figure out which one goes with which residual plot, which scatter plot goes with digital plot A, which one goes with B, and which one goes with C. These seconds to stare. Now let's, look, now let's look at this. This is, remember there, here's, let's look at scatter plot one. We got this straight line here. And if you can see the, the, dot, the data, you see like the, the, the scatter plot, the, the points are kind of like going, they're above first, then they go below, then they kind of go above. They kind of do this sort of thing. Not, it's not very obvious on here, but it kind of, go like that and they kind of even like even spread further away. You can say, you kind of get, they're kind of close to the line here and they're spreading farther and farther away. And so this, so one may maybe, maybe look, maybe look at it like this. You can see that this is going to go with residual plot C. Scatter plot one and go with residual plot C because you see how the points are first close to the residual or first close to the least squares regression line, but then they're getting farther and farther away. So it's kind of like maybe if I make a triangle, kind of it's a little clear. See that it's kind of doing that whole thing, but a residual plot makes it much easier to see that. Now let's look at scatter plot two. Scatter plot two looks like you know stuff you know above, below, a little. You know this is random scatter. I mean, if you can kind of gauge exactly which one it would be, but it would be um, residual plot B. There's, you know, it's kind of just points above, points below, and nothing, you know, systematic. There's no real pattern going on here. Now, in the third scatter plot, you can see the points first kind of start above, and then they kind of tend to tuck low below. There's like nothing here. You see how they kind of group themselves below, then they go above. So this is actually an example where uh, a curve line would be better for this data. It's again, it's not obvious from. From just looking at the points that a, that a straight line want to be okay, but see the residual plots much more clear. You can see this pattern here. So that goes to residual plot A. So that's the that's the um 
that's the idea behind residual plots. It makes it much easier to see the patterns in a scatter plot. So if, if only one of these would be okay to use a regression line for the data, it would have to be the one in scatter plot two. This would be the okay one because there's no there's no obvious pattern here. Scatter plot two would be the best one because the residual plot shows no obvious pattern. There is no obvious pattern shown. And then so what we say in closing, when an obvious pattern had turn in capital letters, this is a big deal. An obvious pattern exists in residual plot. The model we are using is not appropriate for the set of data. Not appropriate for the set of data. For the set of data. It is a big deal. Not just because I say it is, but it really will be a big deal on your AP exam. Um, so really um, make sure you spend time with this. It's really not too much more um, complicated than that, but make sure you do always pay attention to that when you're um, analyzing scatter plots and data dealing with, you know, exponential response variables.